Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you the story of how a person stole. In this article, it says 175 Liliana of the Veils promos and foil, but I heard the number is much larger, around 200, 250. Regardless, this guy pretty much stole all these Liliana the Veils and he put them all on eBay. He eventually sold 35 of them to Wizards of the Coast. Now, these are the promo Lilies of the Veil. There's not that many of them, which makes someone who has 200 copies of them all being sold on eBay at the same time very, very suspect, right? So Wizard of the Coast did its own investigation, and they found this guy, and he was guilty. It, it's a very difficult. These are not cards that come across in every trade binder. These are cards that are maybe one out of every hundred trade binders. Beautiful cards, and I don't know why he just didn't keep them. Like if I had two hundred Liliana the Veils, I would just keep them. And be like, all right, uh, if I sell them on eBay right now, I'm going to get you know people will identify them because I'm the only one with them. He had other cards as well, I think $78,000 worth of cards he was selling on eBay at the same time after the cards went missing. It's quite crazy to think about it. Uh, I know that we all have that. Back in my store at Groovy Geckos in Williamsburg, there was this packet of Silver Blade Paladins and at the time $10. One person was given the entire packet because the tournament organizer didn't know that was not supposed to be done that way. So he got about eight or 10 of them. And then he got another packet the next week. It's kind of interesting to think about, you know, what if you had this packet of Liliana of the Veils? So they were investigating stolen magic cards that were taken from the headquarters last year. It's probably somebody on a tour, right? And they took the stolen Liliana the Veils, put them straight on eBay, and they can only get it if you went to a preliminary Pro Tour qualifier. So again, not something that is particularly easy to go to. Uh, you have to win a, you have to be invited and win a regional Pro Tour qualifier. Yeah, so that's how you would get it, is you have to win one tournament to get into the next tournament, which is not at your local game store, which could be kind of far from you, and then you would get a copy of the foil card. That's why, I mean, the foil card itself is very, very pretty and very expensive, but this version of it, there's not that many out there, just given how you would get one. So to have 200 is really, at that point in time, he may have had... 5%, maybe 10% of the entire market. It's probably it's probably a dude who took a tour of the facility and then he saw a packet of cards, he picked it up, and lo and behold, it is a packet of foil lily of the veils. I mean, it's kind of a dream, right? You, you heard of the Hell Vault, right? The Hell Vault had 50 copies of Promo Demonic Tutor, which was $200 at the time. Now it's probably way more. That's a $10,000 packet of cards, and most people didn't know what to do with it. So you had stores actually give them out. They gave out $200 bills, 50 of them at a time. And here's the interesting, the, the quite interesting part about these promo packets. There's a lot of money in them. I don't understand why Wizard of the Coast does not use the promo packets to promote local game stores. It's super obvious why, how to get people into a local game store. Give them an f and promo worth more than $5 and they will all show up. And perhaps the game store doesn't have to, you know, lose money every time. Because they're losing and bleeding money. If I, and I have a game store and we don't care, we don't do magic at all because it is a net negative. Imagine having 12, 14, strangers in your local store that you don't know and then providing uh, air conditioning in Houston or heating or whatever it is um, and providing a space, uh, lighting, electricity, internet, uh, TV and then they would all put in $5 but they would expect $10 back in store credit and free pizza and free soda and stuff. 
you're not going to make very much money. I know a lot of people will say, yes, it's an investment to bring them back. But today's, the local game players are not going to buy from you if you're a penny more expensive than the internet. It just, uh, they're not going to do it. It kind of, it, it's where we are right now as a society is we are so tailored towards Amazon, eBay, and uh, you find the cheapest price and buy it. If it's from a company you have no idea who they are or what their ethics are, that's fine. So uh, several months later, a local hobby and card store in Renton uh, contract, contacted Wizard of the Coast because uh, a suspicious request they received from a group of walk-in customers. They would ask if they would buy several copies of the cards, seven to be exact, from the Shady Trio. The staff found a request to be odd as only attendees of the recent regional Pro Tour qualifier should have access to the card. The inquiry made by the staff led them to learning that 400 copies of the card were stolen. Okay, so it's 400 copies times 200. It's about $80,000. That is pretty impressive that they stole 400 copies of a card that maybe at most has 2,000 copies of it total at the time. The inquiry made by the staff led uh, Wizards then launched their own investigation using a dummy account on eBay to purchase a copy of the card from a seller who was selling multiple copies of the card at around 160 apiece. They were able to contact the seller directly who informed them that he had acquired 25 copies of a card from a contact known only as John. So you can see magic players, I mean, from stealing at Walmart to stealing at Barnes & Nobles to going to like the men's changing apparel changing room to steal. They just like stealing. I don't know what it is, but this, I mean, they like stealing collections. They like, I would not run a local game store from my home. I would tell you that much. You would be missing stuff like crazy. And if you do have a local game store, like I do, we have a lot of security. We have cameras that are uh, life fed into, you know, I can turn on my laptop and see how the store is going. Uh, we have top notch security. And, it, and when we were picking our site, we picked a much more expensive site than the two other places because it was safe. Uh, you don't want people breaking in. Yes, you do have insurance, but who knows when that pays out. So here is the auction. They literally had 400 copies of Lily Honor of the Veil foil from the promo. That's not something you can kind of offset. Um, and obviously they tried because they were trying to sell them seven at a time. And they're trying to sell them, you know, one by one on eBay and not in like, oh, we have 200. It's fascinating they couldn't find a collector for it. Because if they wanted quick money, I'm almost certain they could find a collector in Renton um, who likes this type of stuff. I mean, yes, it's illegal. Yes, it kind of, it sucks. But 200 copies of something that maybe at the height has 2,000 copies, owning 10% of something so valuable and so good looking, that's interesting. Uh, that is interesting. So here, I'm not trying to condone what they did, which was stealing, which is wrong, but they just got greedy. That's the typical Magic the Gathering player story. They you know, go to Walmart, they put a free 98 pa uh, sticker on a booster box, and then they buy one. Then they're like, oh, wow, it worked. I'm going to buy a hundred of them now. And then they get caught when they really should just be like, all right, good. I got one. Great. All right, good. I sold one. Selling one, two, like even four of these is not going to be, be very suspect. But so trying to sell 200 of them or 400 of them when there's not that many of them out there. And at this time, they were selling them extremely early on where only one regional was ever played. So they have double the copy i mean it is insane what when you think about the percentage they had at the time and they were still trying to sell them they couldn't sit back they couldn't wait and that is the story of pretty much every criminal who gets caught is they made a mistake um they had a product in this case it's not drugs but it's magic cards and they didn't distribute it in the correct way because they got greedy they got greedy. I mean, I'm sure that they understood that you can't just sell 400 of these on eBay, that you need to just sell it one by one by one. 
And you, the longer you waited, the more regionals there would be. Therefore, the more supply and the more less. I mean, then people would be like, "Oh, well, mm, I guess that's possible because there's two thousand of them." But when there's only four hundred of them, and you own another four hundred, then it becomes very, very interesting. So they stole four hundred and twenty-two copies of one card, and it's a it's a doozy, right? It is a doozy. So pretty crazy. I think what they did was one person was trying to sell two hundred and fifty copies of the card, and. The rest of the copies must have remained with the other two people. So I don't know if the other two people got caught, but one person trying to sell it on eBay, he definitely got caught because the numbers don't match up. Anyway, that's it. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. If you want more videos on just the hijinks of MTG criminals because they make all types of bad mistakes. MTG judges. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.